you step up, most of you understand. I, I thought the University of Hong Kong students are more. <laughs> can, can someone say something more? What is sustainable development? Pattern of developers using this and our generation is just satisfying. Can you hear at the back? If you can hear, raise your left hand. Yes, I can see your left hand, so they cannot hear. Speak louder. You know, in, in Chinese university students, it's called Dai Hok San. Dai Hok San has to speak Dai Sen loudly. Okay, um, I think sustainable development is a pattern of development that suits the needs of our generation without satisfying the further uh, development of our further uh, generations. Can you hear him at the back? Yes. But now they say yes, you are released. <laughs> well, we have to live our lives so that we will not, will not, uh, will not affect the future generations. They can live their life. Uh, but why, why do we have to work development? If we want to achieve sustainable development, what, what must we do? What must we do if we want to achieve sustainable development? What, have to, what factors do we have to consider? What factors do we have to consider when we talk about sustainable development? What factors? Okay, thank you. Thank you for looking at me. This is a good speaker. Can you hear her at the back? Can you hear her at the back? No. Yeah. Okay, you're really sick. But you said I forgot. <laughs> Social, economic, and environment. So people translate this into saying that when we are talking about sustainable development, we actually mean economic development, social development, and then, uh, have you ever heard of environmental development? Have you ever? I mean, we must be very good student. But have most of you heard of the term environmental development? Yeah, a few. But most have not. Most people think that sustainable development means that we have economic development and there will be social development at minimum damage to the environment. At minimum damage to the environment. This is at least. I, I, think, I think this is what many governments in the world think. I searched Google, I Google economic development. I, Really I Google social development. I got one third of the and the number of returns is only one third. And I and when I search environmental development, I mean in, in quotes, on both ends. Oh maybe zero one one percent, one percent. I suggest you go back to China. Google tonight. You will realize that when people are talking about sustainable development, they are only thinking in terms of economic development, which actually has nothing to do with happiness, by the way. Rich people are typically unhappy because they think they have more money. And rich countries are known to be unhappy countries. That's well known. Right? Do you realize this? Who agree with me? Rich countries are usually unhappy countries. Please, if you agree with me, please raise your hand. Hi, as university students, you know how to demonstrate. Okay, thank you. Who disagree with me? Who think that rich countries are usually happy countries? Please raise your hand. The same people? <laughs> well, more or less, I, I think most people, I think majority think that um, rich countries are less happy countries, which is basically one of my many cities, too many cities. So economic development has not, uh, at least GDP growth has nothing to do with happiness. Um, social development is difficult to say, but actually very few people think in terms of 
the environmental development, enhancing the ecological value of the environment. And let me ask, sustainable, sustainable development, it is also is a factor. Environment is a factor. Uh, economic is a factor. What are we really hoping to develop? Sustain, sustainable development of what? What do we? What, what do we really want to develop? Can anyone give me an answer? We have uh, something like 400 million, the most brilliant minds in, in Hong Kong at least, maybe in the world. Can you, can you answer me this question? What do we want to develop when we talk about sustainable development? Economic is just a factor. Environment is just a factor. So, so just a factor. What are we going to develop in sustainable development? I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm moving around. Living quality. Living quality. Living quality. Living quality. Living quality. Living quality. Thank you very much. <laughs> give it a, a, a quick hand. Living quality. Quality of life. <laughs> this is what we aim for. Quality of life. The one is quality. What is quality? Be happy. Be happy. Thank you very much. This is the model answer. <laughs> now, we want to be happy. Otherwise, why live on earth? Why live on earth? If it is unhappy, I want my head against the wall. And if it is myself, that will be the most environmentally friendly act of my life and go to the recycle world. Yes, people forget about the ultimate aim of sustainable development. We want, we want happiness. But have you heard of any course on sustainable development of happiness in universities? They have forgotten. Professors have forgotten. They keep on researching, doing research in economic development or social development. And for people working in the environmental field, we have a terrible job. We have to protect the environment. No one thinks in terms of increasing, enhancing the ecological capacity of, say, the humans. Well, it actually, let me tell you, actually is in the manifesto of Silva Lam when he ran for chief executive. Somewhere there he says we will enhance or increase the ecological capacity of Hong Kong. Actually, this is what we should have done before we damage the existing uh, ecological system. But, let me tell you, this is what I find very amazing. When we talk about sustainable, sustainable development, we talk about resources. And whenever we use the word resources, it means that we want to exploit it for human benefit, for my benefit. And nominally, we say that we will use it in such a way that future generations of human beings will have the same use of the same resources. Oh. But, as it stands now, we are not doing it. Think, it's a simple, a simple calculation. American people, I mean you, uh, people living in the United States, um, they account for 1 20th or 5% of the world's population. But they are using one quarter of the energy being used in the world. So it is one twentieth of the population, one quarter of the total energy used in the world. And you know what is the population of China? The population of China is four times that of the United States. Four times. I have just said that the United States they are using one quarter of the world's energy. China is four times the population of 
the United States, if they live their life like the Americans, China alone will have to make use of all the energy being used in the world. So we have to be imperialists. We have to occupy all the land. We have to subjugate all the people to Chinese rule, to Chinese order, to Chinese imperialism. And they have to suffer. They have to live the lowest standard of life so that we, Chinese, could live a life like what the Americans are living now. Can you catch my point? No one is not. Can you catch my point? Uh, oh, oh. Not only our foreign friends are not there. Our Chinese people are very, <laughs> very reserved. Please, if you if you understand my point just now, China is going to use up 100 percent of the world's energy. Please, not your head or raise your hand. No, you are not responding. This is the sense of humor. This simple calculation shows that the American way of life at the moment. That the way they use energy at the moment is simply not a reasonable way of using energy. And it's not a sustainable way of living on Earth. Even if Chinese people are willing to live a life which would use only a, 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 life, a living standard, just half America is still a, a, a big chunk. And, the other, and the, how, how the other people. So at the moment, we are running into a serious problem. We are used to, since I, since I was a boy, I have been watching films from America, Hollywood. And whenever I watch the film, I, I admire how, how, how comfortable their lives are. They are able to drive around, a lot of freedom. And when I graduated from the university, I, I bought a car uh, on the pretext that uh, I, have, I had a child and I have to take him around. Actually, I was simply misguided by what I observed. The films have impressed upon me that anyone will leave university to have a car. Then you will leave the life. The, the, the film starts in the films. I was brainwashed. Like most of you up to this point in time, you think, for example, the ladies, you all think that, uh, you all think that having long hair looks nice. And having it colored looks even nicer. And treating it with certain things to make it either straight or curly would make it even and even more nicer. I'm sorry, uh, simply because you have long hair, uh, I'm using it as an example. But do you know why you wear long hair and not short hair? I was talking to some of the students before we came in. It was, it was mostly because whenever you watch advertisements for shampoo, they will show a lady with very long hair. And after the shower, they would choo! <laughs> and make you feel that this would give glamour, would make you look nice. But you know why they always use a model with long hair? Huh? Use more shampoo, exactly. If they use a model with short hair, they would lose a lot of business because the bottle will last much longer. And for this very commercial reason, we have been convinced that long hair is important to a lady, important to show dignity, important to show elegance, important to show many other things. But tonight, before you if you, before you, you take the shampoo, think, why am I using so much shampoo? And for the male students, think, why do you have to take so much? Why, why do you have to shave 
every morning, or even several times a day. I discover lately that some people shave several times a day. For some reason, very odd reason, they think that showing any any hair, zero permanent hair, is impolite. Having apparently apparently smooth or with a chin is sexy, attractive, is silly, is totally silly. Look at the lions. <laughs> You know the male lion looks different from the female lion? For those of you who know the difference, please raise your hand to show that you're honest. A lot of you are not honest. <laughs> wow, look at, look at the male lion. Hair in the animal kingdom is very important. It is, it is what? is naturally beautiful. Actually, if you look at people from Afghanistan, northern Pakistan, look at people from the Arab world, those who have mustache, beard, to me, they really look very attractive. They are real men. <laughs> we are monkey men. But, because people produce, yeah, they so clean. <laughs> the shaver, why do you need an electric shaver when you have a hand? Because they want to sell. So you know, you know how much we have been brainwashed. So to the extent that we have to use a, a piece of machine, which is totally unnecessary. In my old days, in my young days, <laughs> I use what you can say, okay, the razor blade. Use a razor blade. What's the problem? No problem. It fits every angle. <laughs> now they say they have a 3D, 3D machine. Stupid. But we are convinced. And we, and we, and this, and I think eventually, I, I think they are not computer control. Misapplication of technology. I have to finish you. What am I, what am I talking about? I'm talking about we being brainwashed since we were born to buy things which are totally unnecessary. But we think it is necessary because these people are very clever in creating impressions in our mind about false concepts. And they ask us to buy this or that or many different things, saying that this is fashionable, trendy, to make you feel good, to make you attractive or to make you an attractive animal. If you live in in a in, in a part of the world with fair skin, they will say tan is good. When they go to a place of the world where the skin has color, they will say what is good. In Hong Kong, most people will, I mean the products are safe. Uh, making you look pale. What was what, that kind of Mei Ba? Beautiful what? Why what is beautiful? I don't know. Actually, whatever color your skin is, it is beautiful. It is you. It is the natural you. But then, we are convinced by these people to buy things. And we are told, we are even told, that the moment you buy things, you are contributing to the economy, you are creating jobs, you are contributing to the welfare of human society. It is totally life. If if you are taking up iron and or copper from the ground and use it for a certain equipment and then you throw it away, it will be less copper to be used for future generations. How? How could they live a life like ours? When it comes to mineral, there's no way they can live their life like ours if you keep on wasting mineral resources in consumer products which are totally unnecessary. And to talk about forests or fish in the sea is actually already open fashioned. We are talking about destroying the whole earth, everything else. I was a physicist. I, I, I studied mathematics and physics. So I thought all comes in the world is using second law, the physical world, but actually the bad things. 
But I became a bit more child when I was 25, 26, 27. And then when I started bird watching, I discovered that birds live a very happy life, a very comfortable life. They never worry about the absence of food tomorrow. They sing every morning when they wake up in praise of providence. I, I am not a, I, I have no belief. But these birds, they know what they need, they eat what they have to eat. When they need to build a nest, they, they find grass here, grass there, small branches here, small branches there, they build a nest. And the nest, when the nest is not used, the nest will become natural material in, in, in a couple of weeks. Everything recycles. The birds never worry. Human beings worry. Why do we worry? Birds live in the present. They don't live in the future. They don't have extra, extra needs beyond what they need. When we buy for want, we don't buy for need. And in buying for want, we use up a lot of precious resources on earth, which would no longer be available to future generations. And I, I am a meteorologist, I'm a weatherman. I know very well that in the past 200 years, especially in the last 30 years, 30 years, we have burnt so much coal, so much petroleum, that something on my control. Every moment you inhale air, the carbon dioxide in the air you inhale, um, one third to one quarter is actually from dead bodies in the past. You know what I mean? Coal. This is, I think, primary school. What is coal made of? What is coal made of? Yes, we saw. What is coal made of? Uh, I have a friend. <laughs> well, he's very fast. He has a friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dead bodies. Yeah. <laughs> dead bodies. Mm. In Chinese, 是古代亡灵的气息，听得懂吗？是古代亡灵的气息。古代亡灵的气息。The carbon dioxide you inhale, one third to one quarter comes from the burning of coal and petroleum. Coal and petroleum actually is formed from the dead bodies of ancient animals and plants. So dead bodies. So don't think you are breathing fresh air when you are in the country parks. Make sure you are breathing in the smell of that body. Because you buy iPhone, because you buy new clothes, because you use electricity, because you use too much water. All this is using energy, all this is burning all coal, this is all of this is burning all dead bodies. For an alien watching the earth from a long distance, they will be struck by how fast carbon dioxide level has been increasing on Earth. At the beginning of the Industrial Revolution 200 years ago, it was 280. 280. It is now 400. It is more than one third. For, for an intelligent alien, he would be able to tell something terribly wrong is happening on this planet. Because in astronomy, things either happen very fast, 0 0.01 seconds, or it takes place over a long time, tens of thousands of years. But for such a drastic change happening in a few decades, it has to be biological. It has to be due to some very significant, terrible, horrible things happening on the planet of biological origin. And in general terms, if they use our own, our same language, they will say the planet, the living world of the planet has cancer. And you know what the cancer is on Earth? Do you know what the cancer is on Earth? You're smiling, you're not under. 
Oh. Are you are you his girlfriend? <laughs> Give me a second. Give me a minute. Do you know what a cat star is? No. Huh? <laughs> don't, hide, don't hide your face, your pretty face. Alright, so, can't say out the other. Who? Or what makes up the face? Human? Please, clap your hands. Our tutors are better than students. <laughs> we are the cancer. Remember, no planet will suddenly have a, a, a change of this magnitude in this composition. This is our world. It is human being. It is cancer. And what have we done? Remember, actually, ever since you are born, you were born in last uh, twenty years ago, actually the world has been deteriorating much faster than when I was born. The amount of energy you have used in your life is probably much more than the amount of energy I have used all through my life up to now because of your very different lifestyle. This world is not sustainable. It is not sustaining happiness. More and more people are unhappy on this earth. This is not sustainable development. We have been trapped by false theories of consumption drives the economy and economy in the that drives prosperity and prosperity, that kind of prosperity brings happiness. It is totally false. I would like you to think about why you wear long hairs, why you have an iPhone, or changing your iPhones all the time, or why you think that, um, um, let's say in the last few years, you should wear very short, short hands, you know, when the short pants suddenly become became trendy, it was during winter a few years back. The short pants be, becoming fashionable during winter. This is because they make sure that you are all wearing long pants. Then they say that you have to wear short pants, and then I get you. So there's some audience who get some misses. Now, today I'm not really saying anything. I'm trying to tell you that when people talk about sustainable development, developments, no one or very few people are really thinking about what it is. They may even have conferences on sustain, sustainable development of cities, etc. But cities by nature can never be sustainable. So you have conferences on fake subjects. On, on subjects which actually has no value. So don't believe in your professors. At the same time, don't believe in everything else. I really want you to think why you are living the way you are living. What's the purpose of that way of living? And your way of living, is it impacting on the lives of other people elsewhere in the world or sometime in the future? Sustainable, sustainable development should guarantee at least one thing, and that is future human beings could arrive on Earth. You understand what I'm saying? Sustainable development should guarantee one thing, the perpetuation, the perpetuity of the human race. But the way we are going, climate change is definitely here. We have seen the hottest December, hottest, hottest uh, November, December. Although Hong Kong was cold in January, it was the hottest January ever since the record began. I mean, a proper is a better record. The world has changed. Remember, you are living in a world which has very substantially changed. You will see plants behaving in very peculiar manner. I have seen them behaving in very peculiar manner, silly manner, last winter. And of course, you know that bees are dying. I think yesterday there was a press report saying that uh, they have bees died. Ninety percent of the bees died in Europe and America, and crop production has come down. This is my final exercise. If actually for every degree centigrade rise in global temperature, 
the rough estimate is that global food production will come down by 10%. I don't argue with being leaving 9 or 11, of course it could, but let's say 10%. If food production goes down by 10%, would people all eat 90% of what it is normal? So that everyone has something to eat. Or would 90% of the people eat all that they need and leave 10% of the people hungry. Those who think that we would, be, we would all be very altruistic, we would only eat 90% of the food we normally take, please raise your hand. Those of you who think that 90% of the people will eat 100% of what they normally eat, so that 10% of the people will be left with no food. Please raise your hand. Please raise your hand high to show that you know about human. Thank you very much. In all, I've been talking to many, many audiences, and the return to my question is always the same. No one believes that. We would eat ninety percent of the food to the everyone. It, it is too hard to say. I think if ten percent of the people are going to die, we have now seven billion people on earth. Ten percent is seven hundred million people. Seven hundred million. People. So in climate change, which has arisen because we burn coal and petroleum, because we buy we buy new clothes every week. It will lead to 700 people dying. And after this seven, 700 million people die, and other 700 million people will follow, I'm sure. But then, when change takes place, it will accelerate. So, I have to finish. I have to make you think, but you don't have to agree with my, what I have said. Think what you are, how you are living your life. How you are impacting on other people, how much your brain has been washed by commercial advertisements. Are you buying for what you don't need, but only buying for what you want? And remember, climate change is now not a joke, it's very serious. And I might be lucky enough not to see the serious impact of the climate change, but you will be very lucky, you will see the impact of climate change. In the old days, we talk about we have to care about the next generation, but let me tell you, you have to care about your last few years. So you have not made of any. It's something you have to worry about. And you have better to act. Thank you very much.